Hello Grade 11s and welcome to this lesson on geometrical figures and quadrilaterals in analytical geometry. In this lesson we will integrate our knowledge of quadrilaterals and geometrical figures with all the formulae that we know and calculations that we are able to make about lines and points in the Cartesian plane. Let's start with the parallelogram. Its most important property is that the opposite sides are equal and parallel. The diagonals bisect each other. This means that they cut each other in half. The alternate angles inside the parallelogram are equal because the opposite sides are parallel. Most of the questions that involve quadrilaterals on the Cartesian plane will have a parallelogram. Let's do a problem together. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Calculate the perimeter of triangle A, B, C without a calculator. To find the perimeter of any shape, we need to add the length of each side. To do this, we first need to find the length of each side. Let's calculate the length of AB first. Distance is equals to the square root of, into brackets, x2 minus x1 squared, plus, into brackets, y2 minus y1 squared. We substitute points A, 0, 2, and B, negative 5 and negative 3 into the formula. A, B is equals to the square root of, into brackets, 0 minus negative 5 squared, plus, into brackets, 2 minus negative 3 squared. Using bod mass, we see that both the first and second bracket are equal to 5. 5 squared is 25. 25 plus 25 is equals to 50. We can simplify this to be 5 times the square root of 2. We have now found the distance of AB. The question asked us to find the perimeter of the triangle ABC, so we still need to find the length of the other two sides and then add them together. Let's substitute point A02 and C2 negative 2 into the distance formula. AC is equal to the square root of, into brackets, 0 minus 2 squared plus, into brackets, 2 minus negative 2 squared. Using bod mass, we see that the inside of the first bracket is equal to 2 and the second, 4. 2 squared is equal to 4 and 4 squared is equal to 16. 4 plus 16 is equal to 20. We can simplify this to be 2 times the square root of 5. Let's find the last side now. Let's substitute point B, negative 5 and negative 3 and C, 2, negative 2, into the distance formula. BC is equal to the square root of, into brackets, negative 5 minus 2 squared plus, into brackets, negative 3 minus negative 2 squared. Using bod mass, we see that the inside of the first bracket is equal to negative 7 and the second, negative 1. Negative 7 squared is equal to 49 and negative 1 squared is equal to 1. 49 plus 1 is equals to 50. We can simplify this to be 5 times the square root of 2. The question asked us to find the perimeter without the use of a calculator. Let's add the length of the three sides. 5 square root 2 plus 2 square root 5 plus 5 square root 2 equals 10 square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 5. This answer looks a little complicated, but it's actually quite simple. In algebra, when we add like terms, the kind of things that we add stay the same. For example, 5 houses plus 5 houses gives us 10 houses. And 5x plus 5x gives us 10x. In the same way, we can add 5 square root 2's to 5 square root 2's and get 10 square roots 2's. These questions are simple, but usually require a couple of steps to solve them. In the last question, we first had to find the distance of each line and then add the distances together. Let's try another one. What kind of triangle is ABC? 
This question leads on from the previous one. You have just found the lengths of each line. This means we will be able to determine what sort of triangle it is. Two of the sides have equal lengths. This means that triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. This information gives us a clue about what type of quadrilateral ABCD is. We have been told that it is a parallelogram, but now we also know that two of the adjacent sides are the same length. This means that ABCD is a rhombus. A rhombus is like a squashed square. All sides are the same length. Opposite angles are equal in size and the diagonals bisect the angles. This means that the diagonals cut the angles in half. The diagonals also bisect each other at a 90 degree angle. That's a lot of information, but it's important that we remember all the characteristics so that it can help us with the next question. Let's try it together. Determine the coordinates of D. Remember, a parallelogram is a regular shape. So what happens on one side happens on the other side too. This means that the distance between A and D is the same as the distance between B and C. So we're going to see by how much the X and Y coordinates change. From B to C, the X coordinate value changes from negative 5 to 2. This means that 7 is added to the X coordinate. The Y coordinate changes from negative 3 to negative 2. This means that one unit has been added to the Y coordinate. So let's do exactly the same when moving from A up and across to D. This means that we will add 7 to the X coordinate and 1 to the Y coordinate. 0 plus 7 is 7. 2 plus 1 is 3. This means that D is equal to 7, 3. Let's do the final question together. Prove that the diagonals of the parallelogram bisect each other. Remember that bisect means to divide in half. To prove this, we need to show that the midpoint of each diagonal is the same point. Let's go ahead and find the midpoints. The midpoint of AC is equal to 0 plus 2 divided by 2 and 2 plus negative 2 divided by 2. This is equal to 1, 0. The midpoint of BD is equal to negative 5 plus 7 divided by 2 and negative 3 plus 3 divided by 2. This is equals to 1, 0. The midpoint of AC is the same as the midpoint BD. Therefore, the diagonals bisect each other. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Analytical Geometry Tasks video. You'll also be able to learn more about analytical geometry on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.